Welcome back. Let's take a look at my clock class. Now my magic initializer is taking in any number of regular arguments and any number of keyworded arguments because it needs to be flexible. I need to call it with nothing and with hours and minutes or just minutes or a string or even a dictionary with the keys of hours and minutes. The hard thing about doing this is figuring out what came in. So here we have our number of arcs, which is the lead of arcs. If we have dict arcs, then we have a dictionary. And we have a private resolve dict arcs method. And we're going to pass that dictionary in. Otherwise, we're looking at the case when the number of args is zero or one. If there are zero args, then I'm going to push it to one by sticking in the string that is the time right now. If the arg zero is a string, I will expect it to split on the colon, and that'll be the hours in minutes. Then the hours and minutes are equal to that string split on the colon. If my args of zero is a dictionary, then we're here. And we want to realize that there are two ways to get a dictionary. One is that we get dict args, and the other is that we get it as the first arg of the args. So here again, we are calling resolve dict args with this label of a dictionary. Otherwise, we have a one thing. So here's my arg zero, I'm going to assume it's a sequence of two and that they are hours and minutes. And if that crashes with a type error, then I'll set my hours to be zero and what is left will be my minutes. So that's everything that can happen if my number of arguments is zero or one. If there are two arcs, then we will assume that they are hours and minutes. Otherwise, I'm clueless, and I'm going to raise a type error. And you see, as my type error, I will raise my, my clock's magic dock, and that gives our user the information that he needs. However, I got down to line 33. I'm going to call my private normalize. That is just some algorithm to get the numbers back on the clock. We won't look at that. That dictionary is expected to have a minutes and hours. Then if any of these don't happen and I get a key error, then I'll raise that type error again. And we will spit out the clock's documentation. No matter what happens wrong, that doc string is going to come out. So we really need to keep that correct, up to date. Our magic string then is going to report a string that is the number of hours in a field of two, and then a colon, and the number of seconds. Now, let's go to main and look at our testing to motivate ourselves. Here, I'm making a clock, which should be the time right now. And then I'm going to make a C1, which is the clock at 1259. From there, I am going to make a big range of hours and a big range of minutes. And we're going to make a C2 that is that hours and minutes. So there will be a lot of C2s. We're going to assert that if we evaluate the wrapper of C2, we get C2. To do that, we have to make a magic wrapper. The magic wrapper, which gets called when the built-in gets called, it's supposed to return a string that, when evaluated, returns an object that is equal to the self. So we're going to have the self's magic class, magic name, which is a string form of the class. And then we're going to slap on a string that has in there some parens. And then the self in those parens, that should evaluate to exactly the same object. But when you run it, you'll find it does not know how to do the double equals. So we have to make a magic equals. So let's go ahead and look at our magic equals. 
magic equals gets called when there is a double equals. There's a self on one side here and the other on the other. And so we're going to do the comp of the self and the other because it compares the two and returns zero if they're the same. And when I try to do that, I learn that the interpreter does not know how to compare clocks. So I have to make a magic comp. Well, for the magic comp, I am going to compare the integer version of the self and the integer version of the other. And so here is my magic end, and you see that it calls my minute since 12. And that will be an integer that gets returned. And here is my minute since 12, and that's the algorithm to see how many minutes there are since 12. So that's how we got the equals. What is left is the magic add. Apples plus apples, you get more apples. So it's another clock, and we're going to take the hours of the self and add it to the hours of the other. And we'll do the same thing with the minutes, and then we remember that the clock initializer is going to run that value through the private normalize. So we get it back on the clock. Then we have a magic sub for binus. Okay, the hours will be the self hours minus the other hours, and the minutes will be the self minutes minus the other minutes. Now I'm in good shape to continue with our testing because I can assert that the eval of the ripper is the same as the original object for all these objects. So that's a lot of testing. We'll make an int of that C2, and I'm asserting that when I make a clock of the int of the C2, I get back the object equal to the C2, since the int C2 gives us the minute since 12, so here, if we get an assertion error, we know that the int is not right. Here I am summing C1 and C2, and I am subtracting C1 and C2. If I add the sum and the diff, these will cancel out and we'll end up with two C1s. So here I'm making two times C1 hours and two times C1 minutes and making a C4 clock which better be 2 times C1. We're going to make a C3 that had better be equal to our C4. Now we're making a C5 that is the negative of our C2. So our C diff then should be equal to our C1 plus our C5. So we tested a bunch of arithmetic on our clocks. Here we're testing some other ways to initialize a clock. I am going to have my hours and minutes be 2 and 30. And that will be put in a list as the first element. And then I'm going to add more clocks. I'm going to make a tuple of the same hours and minutes. And then I'm going to make a string with the same hours and minutes. And then I am making a dictionary of those hours and minutes. And in the end, I am doing an hours equals and a minutes equals as two arguments, and so they all should be the same. I can say for all of them, except the first one, they should be equal to the same first one. The clock with three arguments should raise that type error, and that type error will give the message in the magic doc string, and if that's true, we get a pass. Otherwise, I'm going to print that this failed. Now, I carefully made all this testing so that all this code runs, and it produces no output. But before you get there, you better test all the code and put in some print output so you're sure you're really running it. <sighs> okay, we did that. I expect that that convinced you of how powerful Python is when you use its magic. See you in the next lab.